Some people say that living for God is really easy. They quote the scripture, the ways of a transgressor is hard. So the ways of a sinner is hard. That is true. So by default, are you saying that living for God is easy because the ways of a transgressor is hard? If you are truly living for God and elevating in Him, getting stronger and stronger in Him, living for God is a perfecting process. So if you are constantly growing in God, how can you say that living for God is easy? If living for God is easy, why aren't more people doing it? What are some easy things on earth? For most people, walking is easy. Why? Because most people walk. Eating for most people is easy. Why? Because most people walk. Doing daily functions for most are easy because most people do it. So when there are more people in sin than serving God, how can you say serving God is easy? I can talk, I can tell you some of the things that people have told me, people that want to serve God, but they say that it is hard. It is hard. <laughs> when you say, Let's say that there is a person trying to live for God. And if they constantly hear that living for God is easy, when it is hard from them, they are going to get discouraged. And they may even quit trying to live for God. So tell people the truth. When I hear people say that living for God is easy, I believe they are either saying it in ignorance, or they are lying, or they are lukewarm. Chances are lukewarm or they aren't telling the full truth. Because there is no way no, it is not easy. What is your point, Kevin? Okay. Although living for God is not easy, it can become much more difficult for you if you don't command the demons to leave. And some people may say, how can you command an entity that have more power than you, so it seems. Let's go to Genesis chapter one, verse 26. You know what I don't understand? Let me get to it first. To the left is the King James Version, to the right is the Expanded Bible. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and all and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so we have dominion over creeps <laughs> so God gave humans dominion over this earth. So if we have power over the earth, 
why are people serving Satan? You are asking Satan for things of the earth. Yes, he gives you some power, blah, blah, blah. But you are asking him things of this earth, power, money, and stuff like that, when you have authority over this earth. Why would you ask him for something that you already have? Why would you serve someone when you have more power than they? Satan and demons don't have authority over this earth. It does not matter how powerful demons and Satan are. When they are on this earth, we have authority, dominion over this earth. So when they come here, we can command them to leave and they can't do anything about it. But when you are uninformed and you pray to demons, asking demons to act on your behalf, that is when they gain power and rule to a certain extent on this earth. When you pray to God, what are you doing? When you ask God for things, you are asking God to act on your behalf because he has given us authority. So, hey, hey, God, I am giving you my authority to take care of this and that. When you pray to demons, when you sin, what are you doing? You are giving your authority over demons to demons to act on your behalf. When you speak in a very mean way to people or speaking poorly about people, what are you doing? You are cursing that person. It may not seem that way. It may seem much more innocent than what you believe, but that is what you are doing. You are speaking word curses over people. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So you are in truth cursing that person. And demons are acting upon that. I pray that all of this is making sense. So when it comes down to the demons of lust, strife, anger, hatred, witchcraft, so on and so on, when you see particular qualities that are bad, especially when you don't want those qualities, command those demons to leave. Let's say that you are in your dreams or if demons are trying to tempt you with anything, you name what we have to understand. For every bad quality there is, there is a demon controlling it. This is what I believe. And you may say, how can you say that? For instance, let's take something bad. Rape. Do you believe that the spirit of rape is of God? If it is not of God, then what is it of? A demon. 
So the spirit of rape is a demon, right? Because you can't say that it is of God. Whatever bad qualities that any demon is trying to tempt you with, any enemy that come your way and the bad qualities you see in that person, rebuke it and command the demons to leave. Demons of lust, I command you to leave. Demons of hatred, I command you to leave. Either you see it within yourself or in other people, since you have authority over this earth and not demons. So how do you give authority to demons? When you sin. When you speak rudely and badly about people, word curses, you are giving authority to demons. So when you are following what the Bible is saying, you can command the demons to leave. Demons of lust, hatred, anger, foolishness, strife. I command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. You have authority over them. And like I said, when you choose to not fight against demons or pray, why do you believe that why for many people, praying and reading the Bible is so hard for people. Or when they try to do it, they either get really sleepy or they get tired, fall to sleep, or they lose interest in it so easily. Because those things are powerful. What if most people would pray and read the Bible? The demonic activity that is happening on this earth would decrease so much by far. Think about this. You can watch movies for most people. They can watch movies, TV shows all day long for hours and not really get tired or anything. They can play video games all day long and not get tired and stuff like that. But seconds of praying and reading the Bible, you will yawn and your body will get really, really tired and you may even fall asleep. Why is that? It is not that Reading the Bible and praying is boring. It is demons doing warfare against you. Why are not, why aren't they warring against you when you are watching TV and stuff? Why is it so easy to watch TV for hours, but if you read for if you read the Bible for five minutes or so, it seems like a whole hour. Because what you are doing is powerful and they don't want you to do it. So they are fighting against you. Command those demons of tiredness that is trying to make you tired when you are reading the Bible. It is not that you are tired. They are making you tired. So it is a supernatural tiredness. Because while you are reading the Bible, you are tired, but seconds after you watch TV and you are wide awake. So that means that you are not tired. It was demons making you tired. Making your body tired. 
when you are not actually tired. So demons fighting against you. We all need to pray more. This one time, actually many times, but this one instant, instance, when I would pray within five or 10 minutes, I would like get so tired and fall to sleep and stuff like that. And this one instance, I told myself, no matter how many times I fall to sleep while I am praying, once I wake up, I am going back to praying. So when I started to pray within 10 minutes or so, I went to sleep. Then I woke up. Then I went right back to praying again. I'm like, nope, going back to prayer. And I continued this for hours, man. And I was shocked by how am I tired when I just took that nap and that second nap and that third nap spiritual warfare it is a demon and I continued to do this over and over and over again and even with reading the Bible too I would fall to sleep and I told myself nope I am going to continue to read so I went to sleep then when I woke up I started to read the Bible then I went to sleep again I am serious there is a reason why this is happening Demons want to keep you away from reading the Bible and praying and going on a fast. There is power in this. It is not boring. It is warfare. Because it makes no sense. You can go shopping for many hours. You can read books about Harry Potter and The Hobbit and stuff like that all day long. But you crack open the Bible <laughs> and you fall asleep. You, you start praying and you fall to sleep. Why is that? Spiritual warfare. Demons. Prayers seem like it is a very simple or non-effective way of doing something. It has so much power. It has. If you want to get more strong in God, for instance, let me say this too. If you want to get more strong in God, you have to increase the time you read the Bible and pray. I was praying. Every so often I may pray, <clears throat> I may pray and read the Bible with other people on the internet and stuff like that. And for many people, let me say 90% of the people I read and pray with, they get bored so quickly. So quickly. And there are people that read the Bible for hours. Hours. But we will probably read for an hour or two and their focus is off and stuff like that. Why is that? Warfare. Demons want to keep us from reading and praying. I'm telling you, I notice a difference when I increase my prayers. I notice a difference when I read the Bible, I notice a difference 
when I fast, especially when you are doing all of those things at one time. There is a difference. If you want to, people ask me, what can I do to serve God or to get stronger in God? When I say read your Bible and pray and fast, those may seem like very simple things, but in truth, they may seem like very simple things or ineffective things, but they are so powerful. Those things mean a lot. It may sound simple, like you may think to yourself, or you may think that, well, to actually be doing things for God, I need to teach to 1,000 people. I need to have a ministry where I am feeding 1,000 people. I need to have something really big to really serve God. No, 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 no. That is works. That is works. Let me say this. If you really want to do something for God, it is the basics that you should focus on. Not all, not all on this grand stuff. Make sure, first of all, make sure that your life is right with God first. Make sure that you are obeying him. Then focus on reading, praying, and fasting. Do those things. You may think that those things are very small, but it is actually larger than what you think. Other than thinking about preaching to many people and having these big organizations and stuff like that, your mind should not even be on those things. You should be focused on a personal relationship with God. It is crazy. You are thinking about ministering to people, but you are not doing the basics. If someone asks you something about God and you don't really read, read the Bible, how can you help that person out? You don't know the Bible too well, but you are thinking about ministry first without building a relationship with God. And you may even be lukewarm. How can you be a help to people into changing their lives when your life, when your relationship with God is really not even there? It is the basics that we need to focus on. But some people want to jump from A to F. <laughs> you have to go to B first, then C, then D. You have to build yourself up in God first by doing the basics, which the basics are powerful. And I am not saying that I am at the top and stuff. No, I am still growing more in God too. Everyone is growing, not everyone, but people who are serving God is growing more in God. No matter how long they say they have been serving God, if you are not growing in God, 
something is not right. If you are not growing, you are going back and forth in God or decreasing in God. So pretty much you are jumping back and forth in sin or something like that. If you are not growing, because there have to be a reason why you are not growing. So you are jumping back and forth in sin or something like that. So I pray that this makes sense. God bless.